Well, good morning and welcome to First Presbyterian Church Online as we gather to worship from our living rooms, uh, from wherever we are. We are pleased to be able to gather to worship the Lord and recognize the many, many, many reasons we have to glorify Him. Several things going on in the life of the church. There's actually a lot of things going on in the life of the church this week that I'd like to share with you. We have Sunday school classes every Sunday at 9.15 a.m. for uh, youth and adults alike. You can get information about that from the bulletin or by contacting AJ or Pastor Jenny for login information for those classes. But anyone is welcome. Uh, If you've never joined a class before, you will be able to, to just jump right in and not feel like you've been left behind. So please consider joining us for those classes um, every Sunday morning before worship. On Tuesdays, we have a Bible study at 10.30 a.m. On Thursdays, we have a Bible study at 11.30 a.m. And on Saturdays, we have a 10 a.m. Bible study. Again, same with, as with Sunday school, anyone can join these at any time, and we are happy to provide these opportunities to further your growth in the Word of God. Uh, This afternoon, we have a 412 tween group. So 412 meets at 412 p.m. And they will be doing an online party game today. It's a little bit of a change from the um, plan, but we've, we've kind of shifted and adapted a little bit. And you can talk with AJ or your leaders about that to get information on how to join up with that. But please, um, if you are a youth in that age range or if you know a youth in that age range, age range, please be sure to join us for 412 this afternoon. On Friday, our college age group will be meeting at 8 o'clock for a digital movie night, and you can get information from AJ about that as well. Um, Please consider joining us and watching a movie together from um, our own living rooms, uh, but join together in in a virtual movie theater, if you will. Next Friday, our young adults will be playing Pictionary Online at 7 p.m., so if you're a young adult, please plan on joining us for that. Um, I know our young adults group has been enjoying finding ways to gather remotely, and um, AJ has been very creative in in helping coordinate that, so uh, please consider joining us if you consider yourself a young adult. Vacation Bible School happened a few weeks ago, but we have decided to keep those online opportunities up for the foreseeable future. You can see those... um, pre-recorded videos on our YouTube channel or on our Facebook channel, um, and you can get supplies from AJ. We still have a few supplies left, and if you would like to participate in Vacation Bible School on your own time frame, we are happy to help make that happen. So please consider joining us for that if you haven't already. Uh, also, we have a mask-making endeavor going on at the church where we have surgical drape cloth that we are cutting into uh, a mask shape with our church logo on it, and we need people to help us sew those together. We have packets available um, with the the mask pieces, the thread, uh, or not the thread, the mask pieces, the elastic, and a guideline on how to make it. It's a very easy sewing job. Um, I learned to do it in probably five minutes, and the only failure I had was because I had never sewed before, and I learned what the bobbin does later on. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. And um, we invite you to help us um, in this community effort to provide masks uh, for our church and for the ministries our church supports. So, uh, or for anybody that needs it even. If we find out that somebody off the street needs a mask, we will happily share that mask with them. So please consider helping us with that. You can talk to Pastor Jenny or you can talk to me for more information there. We also have two book clubs that are uh, starting up this month. Uh, Women Rowing North will be meeting this Wednesday at 7.30 p.m., and you can talk to Pastor Jenny about that. And Reviving Ophelia will be meeting on the 28th of July at 7 p.m., and also Pastor Jenny can give you more login information for that. A lot of opportunities to further your growth in the Word. I hope you'll take advantage of it. Uh, But for now, let's also look at our community. If you'll take a moment to greet one another in the chat and let us know you're with us with a um, a hello or an emoji icon just to let us know you're here so that we know what kind of an impact this service has as we look to, to make changes or adapt as we might need to. So let us greet one another in the good news of Jesus Christ.
Good morning, First Presbyterian Church. It is great to have you here in worship with us this morning, and we are excited that you are here. Please join with us in our first praise hymn this morning, Thrive. Join us in voice and spirit as we get started this morning.
friends, what a good reminder that we were made for so much more than ordinary lives. And so as we come together for worship on this day, it is our hope that we continue to thrive. And with that thought in mind, I invite you to join with me in our call to worship. We gather today in the fertile soil of the church, eager to learn, eager to grow. We take with us seeds to sow, knowing that not all will thrive. We can take today's lessons and spread them far and wide. We can plant and tend and harvest, knowing that the Holy Spirit changes lives. Let us worship God. We come to a moment in our time of worship where we take stock of where we are. We look at the shortcomings and we know that 
God meets us in those places, forgives us for our faults. When we come to him, he receives our prayers and petitions with open arms. So let us take a moment to pray our written word of prayer, followed by our own time of silent prayer and confession. Will you pray with me? Dear Lord, we often throw your word out in the world, but we don't make it clear and we fail to live the lessons ourselves. We share our faith, but don't always follow up and get sometimes just give up. Give us the patience to not only understand your word, but to make it understood by others. Give us the discernment to know when we need help and guidance to keep our light shining brightly. Help us to accept our doubts and the doubts of others and move past them in faith. Create in us the fertile ground necessary for the seeds of faith and love to flourish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And friends, hear the good news. Every seed sown belongs to God. Those that grow wildly, those we allow to fall in less than perfect environments for growth, or those we fail to tend to that have fallen from the rich soil. No matter what we sow, God harvests with love, forgiveness, and care. Thanks be to God. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to Good morning, friends. Welcome to our children's message this morning. Now, with me, I have something that I am very fond of. Now, I know a lot of you may not be fond of vegetables, but when I was your age, I wasn't either. But now I love them. I love peppers. I love zucchini. I love broccoli. Yeah, I know that's a big one that people don't really like. And it's interesting. And in fact, over the past couple years, when I moved to the apartment that I'm in now, I have a couple of neighbors who were allowed to plant a garden behind our little building. And they're getting a little older. And when I moved in, they said, hey, if you help us move some stuff and help us do some of the harder work, we'd be happy to provide you with vegetables over the summer. So with a little bit of work, uh, they provide me with bell peppers, tomatoes, sometimes potatoes, lots of wonderful things. And in fact, I've gotten into gardening just a little bit myself. And it's interesting. There's a lot more in, there's a lot more that goes into it than I originally planned. I kind of assume you just kind of dug a hole, put the seeds in and watered it. And it kind of did the rest from there. But if you want to have really good produce, if you want it to grow big and tasty, you have to use things like fertilizer. You have to make sure you have the right levels of nitrogen in the soil. It is a lot of work. And over the past couple of years, I've helped them by helping remove the roots from a nearby tree and help them remove any rocks that may be nearby, help them put up a fence so the rabbits would stop eating our vegetables. <laughs> but our faith experience is a lot like that. Now, we can put our seeds anywhere in the earth and hope for the best. But if we take some 
time, if we are careful with how we, uh, where we put our seeds and what we put them in and make sure they have the right environment, we can make sure that they grow big and strong and healthy. So friends, will you pray with me this morning? Lord God, thank you for this day. God, thank you for giving us the tools to help us know where to plant our seeds of faith. And hopefully we can use those seeds to bear fruit or vegetable in this case and help spread them to others and show them the bounty that you can help provide for us. We say all this in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, amen. Thanks so much for spending time with me today, friends. Hear the word of the Lord from Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 through 9 and 18 through 23. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, And the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on the rocky ground where they did not have much soil. And they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. And then Jesus later continues, Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the world, that person immediately falls away. And as for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil... This is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and another thirty. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Incredible, loving God, sower of the word in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls, may we receive your word. May we cultivate our lives with the help of your spirit to allow that word to grow and flourish that we too may become sowers and sharers. We pray this in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. I want you to think briefly, for those of you that grew up in a church and went through Sunday school, or if you've ever been to a Sunday school lesson or Bible study that's looked at this passage How many times have you heard this passage talked about, 
taught, or preached? And where has the focus always been? It's always been on the seed. The seed that fell upon various places, upon the path, upon the rock, among the thorns, and of course, the good soil. Sunday school classes, Bible studies, devotions, everywhere you look, read, or hear this passage, we talk about the seed and the soil. But have you ever noticed it's not called the parable of the seed and the soil? It's not called the parable of the four soils? If you look at Matthew 13 in your Bible or the other passages in Mark and Luke that reflect the same story, every one of them, if they have a heading, calls it the parable of the sower. Now, the original Greek language in no, at no point has headings selected. Those are all part of the translator's job when they create the headings for uh, each part of the Bible as you read through several paragraphs. And the headings were later added by these translators who translated them into the common language of the people. Jesus initially didn't define this as the parable of the sower either. Jesus didn't say to everyone at that lake shore, come, sit and listen. This is the parable of the sower. Rather, what Jesus said was he said, listen, a sower went out to sow. So early on in his teaching, Jesus does define this story as the story of the sower. And later when he explains it to his disciples, he does define this as the parable of the sower. But to all the people, it was a story of a sower who went out to sow. It wasn't the parable of the soil. It wasn't here a story of the four soils. It was here a story of a sower And what happened is he scattered his seed and it fell upon soils. Now, does that mean that the soil types and their potential meanings are unimportant? No, but it does mean that we should spend some time on the main character of the story, a sower who goes out to sow and scatters seed and the seed falls in various places. The story is the story of the sower. So here we have a sower. And rather than focusing solely on the soil, we're going to talk about the sower first. We have a sower, and if you don't know the definition, to sow is to literally scatter seeds atop the earth. A sower is not a farmer. A sower is not a planter. A sower is one who literally takes his seed and flings it far and wide. And so when Jesus very definitively talks about the story of a sower as opposed to the story of a farmer or a planter, he is making a point right off the bat as to who the main character of the story is, what he's doing, and how he goes about things. He is specifically talking about a method of scattering seed that is haphazard. It's an unwise method of investment, and It's wasteful. So Jesus, in his very beginning of the story, is saying, here you have a person who is planting in different ways, and he's not using the best, uh, the most effective method. So what's he telling us here? Um, And that story that he's telling us has its conclusion as we see the method actually reaps rewards. Even though three out of those four areas completely fail that the seed fell upon, one area yielded greatly. It yielded 30 times, 60 times, even 100 times the seed that was scattered. So even though the sower was haphazard throwing seed here and throwing seed there, it worked and it was effective and it wasn't a waste of effort. Now, in this parable, if the seed is the word of God, as Jesus defines it, the sower is the one who scatters that seed. The sower is the one who shares the word of God. Now, that would be God through the Holy Spirit initially as we hear the word. But I wonder if we might be sowers now. I wonder if we are the ones who are called to scatter the word of God far and wide, not taking careful care with where it falls, 
but simply that our job is to scatter the word as far as we can to share it in every possible way. It might explain why we want to focus on the top types of soil when we hear this passage, rather than the role of soil, or rather than the role of the sower, because if we focus on the role of the sower, that puts the effort upon us. If we focus on the soil, though, then the responsibility is upon the one hearing the word we share. But before we talk about our roles in this parable, whatever roles those might be, let's continue to define the other parts of the parable. And this is where we get into the types of soil uh, that the seed fell upon. Because even when we focus on the soil, we usually look at the soil as other people's reactions to the word rather than our own. And I believe that even though we want to believe we are the good soil, and we want to believe everything is hunky-dory if we're sitting here hearing this sermon today, maybe, just maybe, we have some tilling to do in our own yards before we look at working in other people's yards. So what are the various soils that we're talking about? You have the, store, the part of the story where the seed falls on the path and it gets eaten up very quickly. There's no protection for that seed. Birds come in, eat it up. And, and this is the seed that I think as we look at life today, this is where the word falls. Um, and there's no community. There's no support behind it. There's nobody else there. The word falls upon a person or ourselves and there's really nobody there to, to reinforce and to walk alongside us and teach us as we go to disciple us in our faith. There's this, the rock part where the seed falls upon the rock and it withers because there is no depth. And I think in our lives, that obviously portrays to no learning, no further learning, no going deeper and digging deeper into the word of God and what it means in our lives. There's the seed that fell upon the thorns. It was choked off. And I think that's where there's no application, no accountability. And then, of course, there's the good soil, which we all want to be. That soil grows and multiplies. Now, in our church, we have a mission statement that says we are a community of Christ called to worship, grow, and serve. It's kind of a, um, a three-point base that builds that community. So worship, growth, and service, and then that is, the community is built upon all of that. I wonder if we can parallel that to the story of the soils. The path is the place where there is um, a lack of perhaps service, where we are not uh, allowing the word to take root and cause an effect in our lives. The rock is a place where there is no depth, where uh, there's no growth in our lives. And the weeds or where things choke us out is where I think we fail to potentially worship all the time together. But it's when those three come together to worship, to grow, to serve, we actually find our entire community based upon those things. And that's where we find the good soil. If one is lacking, perhaps we can't find good soil at all in what we do. Now it goes almost without saying, but I'm going to say it anyways because that's what preachers do, that where we want to be is in the good soil. It's a given. We want to be in the good soil. None, none of us ever hear this parable and say, you know, I am so glad my life is like that rock. Or I'm so glad that the word sprang up quickly and withered in my life. Or, or I'm so glad it was choked out or eaten up before it could take root. No, we all know almost inherently when we hear the story, we want the good stuff. We want the good soil. So I would wonder, what are the soils in our lives? I read a very interesting theory about how they tie in to um, the first commandment and the second commandment, the greatest, um, with the second commandment, which was just like the greatest commandment, I'm sorry, um, which are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And I wonder if this theory is right, that perhaps heart, mind, and soul tie in with rock, path, 
and thorns. So what if that, rock, that path, uh, that road that the seed fell upon was our soul? And what if to fail to love the Lord with your whole soul is similar to those who have not allowed God to claim their soul? That the word of God has fallen upon a well-trampled pathway, but it never actually pierces into the soul to take root. And what if the seed that falls upon the thorns represents loving the Lord with our whole heart? For to love the Lord with your whole heart is to have other items um, that don't take precedence over your love of the Lord. So when you fail to love the Lord with your whole heart, other things take precedence over your love for the Lord, similar to how weeds come in and strangle that seed. And that leaves the rock, which might be our mind. To fail to love the Lord with your whole mind is similar to those who have a shallow faith that haven't gone deeper and studied the word. The seed that falls upon rocky ground is not allowed to grow deep and thrive and flourish. If that's the case, then our whole heart, mind, and soul need to be involved for the word to fall upon good soil. It's kind of like that tripod of our mission statement. This is the tripod of faith in the Lord that requires mind, soul, and body, and heart, I'm sorry. Before we become words, sowers of the word today, sharing the word with the world, we need to recognize that we are rooted in good soil first and that we have that tripod to base it on, heart, mind, and soul. And then and only then can we truly become sowers of the word of God, scattering it out to the world. We must recognize that we can only do so much to share that word, to scatter that seed, but that it's really the Holy Spirit that does the heavy lifting in changing hearts and minds and souls. Before we can effectively sow the word, we must ask ourselves, what ground is the word planted in us so that it can multiply 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold? Have we truly loved the Lord with all our whole heart, our whole mind, our whole soul? Are we truly serving, growing, and worshiping so that we can become a community of faith sharing the word with the world? Is the word thriving in our lives? During this COVID time, how has our faith either withered, been plucked up, been choked out or grown to thrive. Because I suspect that when the troubles of this world came, and we had troubles before a pandemic for sure, but this pandemic made everything far more obvious and far more severe and far more uh, ripped open in our lives as we've become aware of what we're really made of. As we encountered this pandemic, and as it has gone month into month into month, four months uh, this week, actually, I think we're seeing evidence of where our faith was based and where there might be room uh, or a need to shore up things. As God's word fell upon our lives, did it fall upon a path and we thought it was good soil? Did it fall up among thorns that we thought was good soil? Did it fall upon rock and we thought it was good soil? The question to ask yourself, it's kind of just to do a, a brief check-in and brief assessment is, maybe I wasn't in as good a soil as I thought. And if not, what do I need to do to enrich that soil, to to till that soil, to ready that soil, like A.J. talked about in his children's sermon, so that rich and nourishing uh, plants may spring forth, the, 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 the growth of faith that we may then go into the world and spread it by so many times than what was put into us. Are we truly ready to claim the meaning of this parable, or has a pandemic made us aware that we still have more work to do in our lives? And if we have more work to do in our lives, you heard me say in the announcements, there's at least five studies happening each week. 
where you can delve into the Word of God. And there's book studies as we hear more and more about how our faith integrates with um, our our life. There's, there's, there's books we study and what it means for our faith. There's discussions that happen. So if you feel like perhaps your soil isn't as good as you thought it was and you need to cultivate it and, and add nitrogen and add richness into it so that you can give that soil the best benefit to multiply the seeds that are within it so that you can share, we have plenty of opportunities here. And if those opportunities don't meet your needs, you can talk to Pastor Jenny, you can talk to me, You can talk to AJ. I'm willing to bet you can talk to any of the other staff members as well that aren't normally in our teaching of the word studies and they will help you or they'll refer you back to us. But we will get you the materials you need and we will work with you to deepen your faith because that is what our church is about. That is what our faith is about, is growing nearer and dearer to the Lord and opening up our hearts for it to take root. Is the word thriving in your life. Because it must thrive before we can truly claim the meaning of this parable that we may become sowers of the word. Now too often when we get to this point, we use this parable either as as a defense of our work or rather a defense of the failure of our work at sharing the word. Or we use it as a presumptive judgment before we even share the word. The person who we might share it with uh, really wasn't allowing the word to penetrate into their lives. They really never engaged. They gave up on the faith too quickly. It really isn't our fault. We did all we could. Uh, Someone was working against us, choking out the word that we shared. But if you listen to the parable of the sower, our job isn't to determine where that seed falls. Our job is to go and scatter the seed, the word of God, widely knowing that some will take hold and some will not. And that which takes hold hold, will multiply 30 times, 60 times, 100 times through the effort of the Holy Spirit. All we do is get it out there and the Holy Spirit will do the heavy lifting. True sowers of the word don't judge the ground upon which the word falls upon. We simply scatter the word of God when we scatter it wildly across the lands, knowing some is going to take root and some won't. The Spirit's the main worker. So how do we do that? How do we become sowers of the Word, flinging the Word of God wildly? I think that's where service comes into play. I think that's where teaching comes into play. It's where community comes into play. It's where worship comes into play. The four key cornerstones of this church are how we sow the Word. We sow the word by inviting people to worship with us, especially now. It's easy to invite them. They can worship in the middle of the night if they want by watching this on Facebook. But we invite and we share and we make it possible. We sow the word by, we scatter the seed by doing service to others, whether it's making masks or helping in the pantry or decorating driveways or any of the number, many, many, many ways we've had service projects going on since March 15th when this started and even well before that, actually. We sow the word by being the hands and feet of Jesus Christ in the world today. We sow the word by being willing to teach others and we can only teach others if we begin to teach ourselves as well. And we sow the word by truly being a community that cares for each other and the world around us. By being in the world, but not of the world. By knowing that we can be different and yet still be part of the world. By being a community that cares and shares and loves, we sow the word scatter, and we sow that word and scatter it far and wide, knowing that some will take hold. How can you, Scatter the word of God today, far and wide, that all may hear and that some will take root. Be sowers of the word. Amen. Take thou our minds, dear Lord, Humbly pray, give us the mind of Christ. 
each passing day. Teach us to know the truth that sets us free. Grant us in all our thoughts to honor Thee. Take Thou our hearts, O Christ, they are Thine own. Come Thou within our souls, scripture tells us where two or three are gathered, Christ is there. And it's that thought that we hold on to as we gather into a time of prayer today. Will you pray with me? Loving and gracious God, we thank you for this day, for the opportunity that we have to worship together from the safety and comfort of our own homes. God, we are mindful of those in our families as, those, as well as those in our church family who are in need of your presence. We think of those that are facing cancer. And we pray for Greg and his family as he seeks treatment for brain cancer. And we also think of those that have recently had new medical diagnoses and those that are still waiting to hear about their diagnosis and making plans for treatment and going ahead. God, we pray for those that have lost loved ones. When we think about Monica and her family and ask God that you be with them as they gather this week to say goodbye. God, we thank you for the ways that you provide for us and ask that you help us to be sowers of the word, that we still work to till the ground so that those seeds can take root and those seeds can thrive. God, meet us in this place. Fill us with your spirit. Fill us with your love. 
that as we interact with people around us, we are sowing those seeds, that we are your hands and feet, that we are serving and loving in your name. And hear us now as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this daily, <laughs> forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as we gather in this place, wherever this place may be, we know that we are blessed by a God who loves us more than we could ever begin to imagine. And as we think about all that God has gifted to us, may we also think about how we can gift back a portion of what God has given. We give you that opportunity today to give to God. You can do that through a variety of ways. But most importantly, that we may give with a cheerful heart. Let us take a moment now to give our offerings to God. pray with me. Gracious and generous God, we thank you for the gifts that you give us daily. Help us to be mindful of these things, to be good stewards, to know the blessings that you give us and to share them freely and willingly with others. God, may these gifts which we give today, may they be multiplied and used for your good and your glory, both here and around the world. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to live so God can use me any I'm gonna see 
And so, my friends, go into the world, scattering the word of God anywhere it might fall. Let the Holy Spirit do the work. We have a simple job, and that is to share the good news of Jesus Christ, the impact it's had in our lives. And we can do that in so many different ways, by being a community, by being of service, by helping people to grow, and by worshiping together. Uh, What a wonderful gift we've had in receiving the gift of grace through our Lord Jesus Christ. And now receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and communion in, with, and of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds is thine to Be joined that